going to, uh, there we are, going to have our second talk on personal data, and then uh, these two will also be up here with Mehdi uh, to uh, dig more into it in, in a panel discussion. Uh, this is on uh, personal personal data in uh, personal data under state surveillance. That's I wanted to get wanted to get that right. I'm really yeah. curious to see what you have to say about that and say your name for us. Chloridic. Chloridic. All right. Welcome. Thank you. So. Now we are. Uh, we will talk about uh, yes, uh, global surveillance and government surveillance uh, this year because we have uh, some uh, some some uh, files uh, in La Quadrature uh, this year about that. Uh, so we will uh, quickly talk about uh, GDPR. But you know, uh, you know what is a GDPR, and you are you have a lot of information already uh, about that. Uh, we will talk about Technopolis. Which is a campaign of like a campaign of like quadrature uh, this year, facial recognition usage in France, and Article 57 and uh, general surveillance on the social media. No, it doesn't work. So, uh, so who I am? Uh, I am Chloridric. It is uh, obviously a pseudonym. Uh, I'm a software developer and a member of La Quadrature since uh, 2000, uh, 2011. La Quadrature is an NGO uh, existing since um, 2008 and uh, promoting and defending fundamental uh, right, freedom and rights uh, in the digital world. So the GDPR apply, uh, it is a, a European text, applying uh, in case of personal data processing automatic or not. So it is not only on the internet, but uh, um, what does uh, La Quadrature is uh, uh, mostly in the internet, so it is uh, the case we are interested in. And what is a personal data? It is any information which are related to an identified or identifiable individual. What you know about usage of personal data is mostly uh, for advertising, like Google, Yahoo, etc., uh, and advices to create advice in Netflix, for example. But there is other use uh, uh, for this personal data we don't think about a lot, like selection for hiring. There is big companies uh, using personal data and uh, intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence, to hire people. Risky behavior detection, like in the black box in France, uh, the government put black box uh, on the internet to find some risky behavior, uh, like Islamic uh, behavior. Uh, biometric recognition that we are uh, we will talk about, uh, or political influence. I think you know Cambridge Analytica. Uh, it was a big, uh, a big uh, affair uh, about uh, political influence. But there is companies about that uh, created uh, to influence people, like the spinner. You, you will find it on the web. Uh, it is a company uh, who say that uh, uh, they are capable of uh, influence people uh, in the way you want. Uh, and uh, you, you can watch the, this video of uh, Google named Selfish Ledger, uh, where Google explained that they can influence people uh, when they have uh, uh, some information about people. Uh, at the beginning, they, uh, they get information from people. They are able to, to profile these people, to, make, to, to put them in some boxes. Uh, then they don't need any information anymore because they know the people. They know that uh, they will provide some information, so they, they don't need it anymore. And in this case, when they are a very, very, um, uh, very uh, precise profile of these people, this individual, they will be able, as they explain, that they will be able to influence very precisely uh, these people. And this is a video you can find of, uh, on, uh, on uh, YouTube. It was an internal video uh, which has leaked. Um, Technopolis. Uh, so, a few years ago, 
we talked about smart cities. You know smart cities? It is a project from uh, some mayors saying uh, we will use databases, we will use a lot of data in, uh, in the city to improve uh, public services. But these last years, uh, pushed by uh, some weapon companies like Thales, uh, it is now safe city and it is sold as a public space surveillance with a lot of new technologies. So LQDN, uh, La Quadrature du Net, launched a campaign uh, in September with uh, unions and other NGOs to explain to the public that uh, there is now um, uh, a test uh, experimentations in public, uh, in public space for in, the, in some cities like Nice, Marseille, uh, and other like that to, to spy people uh, in the public space. So what technologies are used to to, to, feel, to, to, feed, to feed the databases with, uh, with personal data of people in the public space. We have smart cameras. Smart cameras are feeding databases with behavior, with facial recognition, so where you are, who you met, where you are going, um, uh, when are you are in some place. Uh, so they are feeding databases with that. You can think, uh, about uh, the surveillance now, the cameras now. Uh, if um, a camera is, uh, is uh, recording some place, you have a lot of information, you have a lot of, uh, of uh, stream uh, recorded in a, in, a smart, in a hard drive. But in two, three months, four months, this stream this video will be deleted without uh, anybody to, to watch it if nothing happened uh, in this place. But in the case of smart cameras, you will um, feed a big database with a lot of information. You, you don't have to, to watch uh, to, to get this, uh, this, uh, this stream and watch it. You just have to make uh, statistics about people. You just have to extract information about it. It is, it is not the, the same ID anymore. And we have smart microphones doing the same thing, but with audio, uh, like uh, detecting a car crash. Uh, yes, smart camera. Smart cameras are, uh, are um, spotting events too. Not only faces, but are spotting uh, events like, like a car crash, like people scre um, screaming and uh, and running, uh, or a package uh, a package uh, on so in some place not moving, uh, abandoned package. And smart microphone are, are doing the same, like you have a, a circular saw, you can spot a circular saw or a car crash or people screaming like that, but only the audio. Um, some myers want to use drones to, to monitor uh, demonstrators, for example, or just monitor the streets. Um, uh, if microphones say that there is a car crash somewhere in Saint-Etienne, the mayor wanted to, for, for drones to fly on the place, watch and uh, say if something happened. Um, in Marseille, they want to use big data, uh, so algorithms to, um, to study uh, information on social media, on police database, on hospital databases, and to say if something is strange and if the algorithm finds some uh, curious behavior. And of course, facial recognition that uh, they tried in Nice early this year. Uh, to demonstrate that uh, it is working and they can use it uh, in public spaces and uh, uh, that uh, it is able to find some people. So, we will uh, talk about facial recognition precisely. Facial recognition is a biometric data. The GDPR definition of biometric data is personal data resulting from a specific technical processing relating to the physical, physiological, and behavioral characteristics of an individual which allow or confirm the unique identification of that individual, such as facial recognition or dactyloscopic data. So it is not only 
the, facial, the, the, the face, it is not only the fingerprints, it is the behavior too. When your smartphone says that uh, it can't uh, do something um, like open when uh, it detects that it is you, that uh, it is your behavior or it is detected, uh, like the way you take it or something like that, it is a biometric data. And it is a, a biometric data process. And what says the GDPR about this kind of data? That such personal data should not be processed. It is very clear in the, in the GDPR, in the Recital uh, 51, uh, this kind of data should not be processed. And more, um, the, the way the GDPR works is uh, with your consent, mostly with your consent. If you consent uh, to the use of your data, it is okay to use, uh, to use them. But for biometric data, the GDPR says that member states may maintain or introduce further conditions, including limitation, with regard to the processing of genetic data, biometric data, or data concerning health. So it is mostly limitation, limitation rather than use uh, the biometric data. And if you, at the end, need to use uh, biometric data, need to process biometric data, you should do an impact assessment to check if everything's fine with your process. And of course, the GDPR says that uh, it is a very big issue to use the biometric data because there is a lot of infringement uh, of consequences. And the risk if is, uh, is uh, an infringement of civil liberties, uh, of free speech, of free movement. Because when you know that the computer is able to, uh, to locate you, to, to know where you are, uh, what you do, who you meet uh, uh, in any moment, uh, in the street, are you going? Are you really going uh, to demonstrate? Because you know, the government will be able to find every moment of you just looking for your uh, your IDs in a database. And there is, of course, a risk of leakage of the identifiers, like the face. There is a big uh, database in France uh, named TES, um, which contains. Uh, all the faces of people uh, who asked for a passport uh, or uh, an, identity, uh, an identity card. And uh, the risk is for fingerprints too. Fingerprints is very easy uh, to, to copy. With a simple printer, you can do a fingerprints and put it somewhere to say people were uh, in this place. There is a lot of demonstration like this. What usages uh, do we have with uh, fascia recognition and biometric data uh, right now and, uh, and for tomorrow? We, are, we, we had uh, some, uh, some tests, some experimentations in high schools in France, in Nice and Marseille, um, where Eric Ciotti uh, and other political people uh, in the south of France tried to use uh, uh, fascia recognition at the entrance of, uh, of high schools uh, to check if people were able to enter uh, in, the, in the high school. Um, the CNIL said that uh, it was not the right uh, way to do that. And we said in La Quadrature that uh, people should do that. It is a, it is a school, so uh, students should, uh, should talk to people, not to computer. And in Sweden, they tried to use facial recognition to uh, check if um, students pay either attention to, to what uh, was said uh, in, uh, in the class. Uh, and it was the, the first find um, given to, to some uh, company in uh, Sweden. Um, it was against this school, trying to use uh, facial recognition against uh, students. Alisem, Alisem is a tool uh, provided by the France Home Affairs Department uh, to give um, strong, um, a strong uh, digital identity to people, like, you know, France Connect. France Connect is doing the same, but it is not a strong identity. It is just a digital identity. Um, and Alisem only works with facial recognition. Uh, the TAJ, Traitement des Antecedents Judiciaires, is a big database used by the police and feed 
by um, uh, by people when uh, they are uh, they have a legal um, uh, a legal um, problem. Uh, they are entered in the Taj, uh, and then the police can check uh, with facial recognition in if they uh, can find you in the base. And for tomorrow, uh, they want to use it for, studios, for stadium ban uh, to find people uh, in the crow, uh, and probably in real time on the street to use it to uh, saying that uh, it is uh, much more better for security. So the final, um, the final uh, thing we I want to discuss uh, with you is the fight against fraud in France with the Article 57 uh, in the French 2020 uh, Finance Bill, which wants to authorize tax administration and customs to collect public information on online platforms like Airbnb, like um, Amazon, uh, and other platforms like that, uh, then analyze them. Uh, it is when uh, you, you omit elements uh, to reduce your tax or to sell products you don't should do, like tobacco. Um, it is an experimentation, they say, but it is an experimentation of a lot of platforms with a whole, uh, the whole population uh, in, uh, for, three rare, so for three years. So it is not, it is not uh, an experimentation anymore. Uh, the CNIL um, critiqued um, this, uh, this proposal uh, for a risk of disproportionate interference with rights and freedom, including the right to privacy and right to free speech. So it is very big, but we have a very big problem with the, the CNIL rule right now because they are very weak uh, the, last, uh, the, the, past, uh, the past years. Um, they don't have a, a much, a much power, and the government uh, don't change a word of the law uh, after this um, decision of uh, the CNIL. Uh, and we have an example of usage of this kind of law. Uh, in Dutchland, uh, we have Siri for system risk indication, and they use it, this uh, tax administration uh, tool, uh, with uh, in, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, big data, to, to monitor poor people. Uh, they, they deploy this system in poor zones, and their objective is to check, uh, for example, usage of uh, social welfare. Uh, if, if we give you uh, social welfare to help you live in some place, uh, they will check, the system will check, if you really live in this place. Uh, the system is connected with the smart, uh, the smart meters. You know, uh, we, have, uh, we have some uh, things like that in, uh, in France, like uh, Gaspar, and uh, the other one is Linky. Uh, it is the same thing uh, in, uh, in uh, Dutchland. It is connected to this one, and if you don't uh, use um, a lot of water, the system could say, okay, you don't live in this place, so don't, you don't need this social welfare. So we get the social welfare automatically. So all these tools, we think that it is only technological solutionism. It is marketism, marketing a very dangerous tool. This, uh, this tool to monitor population uh, are very dangerous tool, uh, but it is weapons company selling this tool with marketing. Um, they want to use this technology when people could or should do the job, like in, in school. You don't use uh, robots or, or computer to, 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 to help a student to study. Uh, it is fashion trend for ignorant people. We have a lot of Myers, they don't understand anything about technology, but they want this technology because it is nice, it is, a, it is trend fashion. Um, and mostly the surveillance is used against poor people, not against rich people. For example, a tax evasion is known. You know that there is a lot of VAT fraud. Uh, there is a lot of uh, websites selling uh, stuffs without uh, VAT. So, of course, they are cheaper than uh, in, uh, in, uh, in stores uh, in the street. 
Uh, we know the Panama Papers, we know LuxLeaks, we know SwissLeaks, we have a lot of information. The tax administration have, has a lot of information about uh, tax evasion. But they don't want to use them. There is the Verout Bercy. Uh, it is a lock that the political people, the government, can use to say who should be, uh, uh, should be, um, should be legally, um, how to say, uh, prosecute uh, for tax evasion, and mostly it is poor people. So it is not the tool that, uh, that uh, we, we should use. We should do political stuff, not only technological solutionism. Thank you. Have time for maybe one question. Anyone want to be the question? That's a that's always difficult. Well, we'll we uh, we do have a chance uh, here. We're gonna uh, get set up here for the panel coming up, uh, and we have a couple minutes uh, for you to step out and find an, find another room or let others come in. All right. Thank you. Thank you.